Uh, the world is commemorating the World Immunization Week, and uh, Nigeria is right. pushing for increased vaccination. Clearly, two terms there, which are used interchangeably. But there's a difference, right? Absolutely. Um, vaccination is just the, the act of uh, actually introducing a vaccine, you know, into somebody's body. Uh, while immunization is the act of actually, or the process, should I say, of actually becoming immune, you know, to a disease, uh, which is a result of vaccination very often. You know, so vaccination achieves immunization uh, often, but not always, which is also why we talk about things like COVID and we say after you get vaccinated, or even yellow fever, it takes a number of days before your immunity reaches the peak where it should be to confer immunity upon you or where we then achieve immunization. You know, so vaccination is the act to achieve immunization, uh, but immunization is that, that process or that place where your body is now resistant to disease. Uh, let me just ask then, for how long do we have to wait till this COVID-19 vaccination becomes COVID-19 immunization? Well, on average, um, it, it takes some 10 to 14 days on the average. And uh, it's expected that you really have the immunization expected to, to a reasonable degree uh, after you've had a second dose for most of the vaccines we have out there, except for the Johnson & Johnson one, which is one shot. Uh, and then it still takes a few days for you to get to a state of being immunized. Well, the theme for this year's uh, immunization week is vaccines bring us closer. And uh, just listening to some uh, community leaders in River State, for example, they are calling for some sort of door-to-door -door campaign, basically saying, how about you bring the vaccines closer to the people? Is that something workable uh, with this vaccination drive for COVID-19? Um, it's, let me say it's not impossible because that is something that has been done for other programs. And uh, more recently, that was done for polio vaccination. Uh, we had vaccine, I mean, vaccinators who went round the place door to door. And I'm sure many of us, even though we're not children, we saw that, you know, so it's, it's practicable. It's something that can be done. It's expensive. Uh, because you have to think about that logistics, that's additional cost. The logistics of these people not sitting in different centers where we go to them, uh, but they have to come to us. So the, the government will have to provide you know, transport, um, provide uh, even meals and whatnot, because, <laughs> I mean, they're moving around. So there's additional cost, but it's not impossible to do. Okay, so let's talk about the India situation. Uh, well, there's a lot of uh, pressure on the government as to how to tackle this, keeping the Indian variant at bay. So uh, how do you think Nigeria should handle this situation? Uh, I mean, this mutant virus, as, as they call it, seems to be spreading like wildfire in India. Over 300,000 cases, record global uh, figures over the past few days in India. So for Nigeria, what do you advise government to do? Uh, it's a lot of hard work. It's tricky also. Uh, we'll have to, you know, especially because you don't have one access uh, from India to Nigeria. So in which case you could say, oh, all flights from India, uh, we're going to screen them or we block them and all of that. Uh, they, they, they are good. I mean, people from India fly indirectly to Nigeria. So it means all flights are suspect. So, but then it also means that the people you will need the most to help out will be the people at the, at the borders, at the ports. And so not nece even necessarily your virologists or health experts. It's, it's going to be all these other people that are assisting at the ports, the customs, the immigration, uh, immigration particularly perhaps. You know, so that process we have put in place for screening people coming to the country has to be um, watertight, has to mm. function very effectively. And we have to check people. You know, have they been in India? Are they coming from India? Uh, and such people have to be screened uh, even a little bit more, you know, and especially if they are positive, you'll have to check also uh, what kind of virus they have. Is it what? the variant uh, yeah. or something else? You know, so it's a lot more work and it involves a lot of people. Uh, it involves them knowing what this is all about and taking it very seriously. Well, Dr. Kubanja, on a final note, incidentally, on this day last month, 100,000 doses of COVID-19 vaccines arrived in Nigeria from India, which was a donation from the country's government. So do you think that should play any role in Nigeria's decision here? 
Yeah, absolutely not. That that sounds a bit like a bribe now, the way you put it. <laughs> so it definitely shouldn't. Uh, we, we have to do what we have to do. I think um, nobody, including the Indian government, will blame anyone you know, for taking any precautions at this point. So we should just do what we think or know best to do. Well, Dr. Doi Ogumbanja, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us on the program. Pleasure. Thank you for having me.